interesting thing about coming down to the beach, a public beach, is that there's a lot of different people around and everybody has all of their different hypotheses. Here at the beach, everybody can be a scientist. Everybody's coming up with their questions. They're poking and prodding at blubber, at other dead animals, wondering why so many things have died. This is well above average for us annually. People get concerned. They don't know the answers. That's another reason to go out and examine them because we can give them answers about why these animals were dying. And a lot of the deaths that we were able to uh, finalize, like figure out what happened to them, uh, were natural. A collaborative team from Cal Academy and the Marine Mammal Center came down here yesterday to perform a necropsy. And what a necropsy is, is opening up the abdomen in order to explore the stomach and all the different contents, probably to figure out what the last meal was. When we were examining the outside of the sperm whale, we found these circular white marks on the tip of the nose, and, and we weren't really sure what they were at first, but we came to find out later that they are squid sucker marks from giant squids. The first thing we're going to do is try and get at what might be the most telling. So if we see a scuff mark along the back of an animal, uh, we're probably going to focus in that area and try and rule out ship strike. If it's fresh enough, they will collect organs uh, for a histological exam. Uh, so they can try and rule out disease, natural disease. His examination was inconclusive. What we did on the beach, he was a little too decomposed. It was great to be able to work with the Exploratorium to get you guys some of these parts for the sperm whale. So all marine mammals in the United States are federally protected. Sperm whales are endangered. And so we were able to work with uh, National Marine Fisheries and get permits. I got a call from Cal Academy about three weeks ago saying they were gonna drag the sperm whale out to sea and bury it. We didn't realize how much work it actually takes to um, cut up a whale. <laughs> and so we spent probably like six hours down there just trying to get anything we could and we walked away with three ribs. Um, but it's probably the grossest thing that I've ever encountered. And I do a lot of dissections. <laughs> this is really slippery. <laughs> uh oh. This little chunk smells horribly. I'm getting into more flesh. Whale bones have a lot of oil in them, so eventually, uh, after a little bit of a soak, the oil will start kind of coming out and rising to the top. But basically, it's important for us to get all of the oil out because the bones will just keep leaching the oil. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'll have to come back here over the next couple months and just kind of sift um, and exchange the water out. It's called taking care of your stuff. <laughs> As a society, I think everybody likes the idea that you just hand unpleasant tasks to other people. But the world doesn't really work well that way, I don't think. I guess that's the ethic of the bone cleaner. <laughs> a special treat for you because one of the the only bone that we took away from the sperm whale that we're talking about today was uh, his pelvic bone one of his pelvic bones the only one that was accessible to us um, and I put him in warm water maceration and when it, within a two or three weeks it was perfectly clean and when I took it out of the water uh, I was quite surprised and thrilled to find that not only did it come perfectly clean and, and a beautiful representation of a sperm whale pelvic bone, but he had a residual uh, femur from when he actually had legs. Well, his species actually had legs, or his predecessors. Uh, they used to be land dwellers, so they have residual bones from when they were land dwellers a long, long time ago. There isn't any Fukushima radiation, there isn't any, you know, nefarious, crazy stuff going on. This is all just natural stuff that normally we wouldn't have seen these carcasses had it not been for the onshore currents and, and the winds that were around for the last month or so.